Ne treba zbog nervoznih i iskitrenih provokacija Slobodra Miloševića da Now, after deciding to oppose Serbia's policy of war, nationalism and isolation, he proclaimed a new direction towards the West and the EU, stating that Montenegro would accept Western values, the rule of law and a system of parliamentary democracy, and that later on Montenegro would separate from Serbia and become an independent country. Of all of these promises, he only really accomplished the last. In 2006, the country gained its independence from Serbia. And in 2017, the newly autonomous country of Montenegro joined the NATO. However, despite his West-leaning rhetoric, Djukanovic's Montenegro faces ongoing allegations of state corruption and of having compromised the nature of its democracy. The leading party's control over the economy, the judiciary, the media, and even the electoral system have been the focus of opposition. But in the environment created by Djukanovic, opposition parties have struggled to gain enough traction and have not been able to threaten the position of the DPS. So, Djukanovic remains firmly in power. He has been pro-communist, pro-Milosevic, pro-East and pro-West. Instead of being an ideologue, his allegiances have shifted with the tides. Some might say his only true ideology is power and money. As the Independent Weekly Monitor writes, about 60,000 citizens of Montenegro are employed in the public administration. This is around 10% of the population of the country and about 15% of all the voters. To keep their job in the public sector or to secure a raise or an advancement, for an employee this very often entails loyalty to the DPS. So many have been employed due to party favoritism that it has brought a great burden on the country's economy, taking about one quarter of the national budget. Mi ćemo ove godine zaposliti preko 8000 ljudi sa evidencije zavoda za prošljavanje, a prije svega onih ljudi koji podržavaju program Demokratske partije socijalista. I još jedna slada, jedan zaposleni, to su četiri glasa. Uspimo da zaposlimo našeg čoveka, smanjili smo njima, jedan glas je povećali nama. The economy is held by the hands of one man and his cronies. It is also known that the owners of big businesses in the country often are in extremely tight ties with those who hold the political power. These relationships secure their position on the market and often eradicate the non-party affiliated competition on the tenders. For an employee of these companies, as much as for the employees at the public sectors, one of the work duties is often to vote for the DPS in the elections. That connection between state and party, which we had uh, 40 years ago with communist system, with communist party, is still alive in 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 some kind some kind of of, of ordinary ordinary uh, presentation. Evidently, so many of the owners are close friends with the first man of the country, or even part of his immediate family. His brother Atso, also a leader from the ABA revolution in the 90s, is the owner of Prva Banka, one of the biggest banks in the country. His son Blajo owns Solar BB that distributes green energy. His company receives high subsidies from the government for small hydropower plants. This is not a coincidence. People say the actual owner is the man himself. As for the foreign companies that want to operate in Montenegro, it is indeed a hectic job to be registered. Conveniently, the president's sister Anna owns a law company that offers this service. The word is that if one chooses her office in exchange for high commissions, they're given benefits and all the business barriers disappear.
There are 127,000 retired citizens in Montenegro. This accounts for 20% of the country's population. The government is responsible for providing the pension. Among the retirees, there is a fear that if they vote against the leading party, they will lose their position. Also, for those liable to change their mind, the government is to raise the pension just before each election by a few percent. Taking all of this into consideration, those employed in the public service, the big businesses affiliated with the party, the retirees and many more, there is a vast percentage of people that seemingly have their hands tied, facing considerable pressure to vote for the leading party. Some of the voters have been paid to vote. We are last, last country in the Europe to never change the uh, ruling party. It's the same party from 1945. It was Socialist Communist Party and uh, they just changed the name. In Sutomore, one vote costs 50 euros. According to Mans and the opposition, they can rise up to several hundred depending on the pension and the region. In Montenegro, 30% of the population is below or around the poverty line. Thus, the votes that the government pays for aren't very costly for the very affluent political elite. Another phenomenon is that, as the opposition has declared, the voting lists are extremely untidy. Many of those who don't live in Montenegro are reported to have voted, and even some deceased voters stay on the lists. Propaganda and political culture. Misusing institutions, uh, misusing medias, uh, taking over public service in overhand, and uh, additional pressure on the electoral day. Meanwhile, according to the reporters Without Borders, there is a deficit in media freedoms in Montenegro. In 2018, RWB World Freedom Index, the country was ranked 103rd meaning that the freedom of speech in Montenegro is ranked among the lowest in Europe. The independent media faces high pressure from the government, which creates financial barriers to freedom of the press. Their journalists face constant verbal and even physical violence, with many wounded and one killed. Apart from the few independent media outlets, the government has control over the majority of the rest. I've noticed that through the years, Jukanovic too has carefully crafted his own cult of personality. Almost like Tito, the same period, in all positions and practically the owner of the state, it's very hard to speak about elections. He is portrayed as the only guarantor of peace and stability in Montenegro, and as a father figure of the entire nation that delivered Montenegro its independence. While, in fact, Press and reports around the world have stated otherwise. One argument that the voters of the DPS and those who don't vote at all make is that there is no competent opposition to the leading party. Well, the people in general, you know, uh, they are scared of the change. Particularly, they are scared of the change if they do not know what the change is going to be. The opposition, as they say, is extremely fragmented with some being anti-Western, pro-Russian orientated, with somewhat radical ideology, and with others being pro-West but too weak to pose threat to Djukanovic's campaign. The opposition parties have also been accused of many controversies which helped to turn the tide of popular opinion against them. They are not, you know, in British political terms, they are not loyal opposition because they uh, challenge, you know, the mere existence of Montenegrin states and they come on the uh, pro national uh, Serbian uh, nationalistic uh, agenda. In Montenegro, there is now an ongoing trial against the Democratic Front, one of the biggest opposition parties, which is accused of the so called coup supported by the Russians. I think it was uh, one game very well prepared from the security service and uh, in, the, in the way for surviving of this actual, actual regimes. In spite of all of this, more than 40% of the population is always voting for the opposition. 
Although it has never gained the majority in the parliament, they were closed several times. So I think that um, even when we do this calculation, how many of them voted and how many of these who voted have voted for the authorities, you are actually coming to the fact that uh, a bit more than a third of people support this government actively. The government's control of the media serves as a vital mechanism for ensuring that the electorate will favor the leading party on polling days. This means that the opposition parties face an ongoing struggle to gain traction during the elections. The Captured State Aside from all the complaints regarding the irregularities during the elections, the institutions and the Justice Department have never thoroughly examined these conditions. Why? This is because Montenegro is a captured state. According to the EU report, Montenegro is a captured state because its institutions are not independent, but controlled by those in the power. With all this control over the economy, the media, propaganda, the judicial system, it hasn't been too difficult for Djukanovic to retain his control over the past 30 years. Why is this important? It is not only the countries that never had democracy which are in danger from autocratic leaders. When power is misused and voters are swayed with constant propaganda, the populist leaders gain a chance to undermine democracy. Longest serving ruler. ruler.